Hey everybody, how's it going? My name is Brandon and today I want to talk to you about an amazing tool called Bloodhound. Now, Bloodhound is going to be extremely useful when we're looking to enumerate an Active Directory environment. So basically this tool, once we run an ingester, we're going to get an idea of how the domain and multiple domains are actually deployed. We'll get a list of all the users, groups, machines, things like that, and how they relate to each other. So this isn't really an exploit tool, but it's used to find misconfiguration. So really it can be used in an offensive or defensive manner, but it gives you the same result of enumerating an Active Directory domain. So in order to install this tool, they actually have a GitHub repository. I'll link that below down in the description. And if you go over to the wiki page and open up the read the docs, you'll see uh, there's all sorts of ins installation instructions and things like that. So I'm not going to go over installing Bloodhound. I think that, you know, you can go ahead and click through on your operating system, follow these steps and go ahead and set that up for yourself. It's not too bad to set up. Basically, you need a Neo4j database on the back end, which you can use apt to install. And then Bloodhound should work fine as long as you install the other dependencies as well. So going off of that, there is a few different ways to collect data with Bloodhound, right? So once we collect data from the Active Directory domain, we're going to be importing that to our Neo4j database and using that to run all of our queries. So that'll make sense in just a minute. But if you go into this collectors folder, you'll see that we have a uh, sharphound.exe or PS1 file. So we can use this sharphound and run this on a domain computer. It doesn't have to be a domain controller or anything like that, just a machine that is joined to the domain. And that's going to run a bunch of queries and things like that against the domain controller. And from there, it will spit out some JSON files or a zip file. And then you can transfer those into your, your Neo4j database and we'll have Bloodhound ready to go. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go to the um, my Kali instance here. And I do have the Windows 2016 domain controller that we set up in a previous video. If you haven't seen that, a little card should be popping up now. Go ahead and check that out so you can follow along. So instead of running the Sharpound PowerShell module or executable that we talked about earlier on a domain machine and then having to transfer those files off of the machine back to our Kali instance, I'm actually going to be using the uh, Python version of the Bloodhound ingester. So you can install that by doing pip3 install Bloodhound. And after you do that, you should have the, um, sorry, pip3 install Bloodhound. And after you do that, you should have the ingester available on your machine for you to use. But basically all you have to do once you do pip3 install Bloodhound is uh, run Bloodhound Python. So we just do Bloodhound uh, dash Python. And we can see the syntax of that come up here. So essentially, since we are not going to be on a domain join machine, we have to remotely connect to one and it will run all the queries for us there and just spit out all the files that we need. So since in the previous video, when we talked about ASREP roasting, we got access as the J Smith user. Now remember the J Smith user was not privileged or anything, just a regular domain account. So let's do Bloodhound Python. We'll do dash U for username and we'll do J Smith. The password for that account was password one, two, three, very secure. And then what we want to specify next is the uh, name server. So we'll do dash NS, and this is going to be the IP of the DC. So 192.168.1.179, oh, 79, there we go. And then the last parameter that we need to specify is the domain. So let's do dash D for domain, and our domain name was conda.local. Actually, there's one other thing we need to specify here, and that is the collection method. So let's do dash C all. Basically, this means it's going to collect as much data as it possibly can. You can see a list of the different collection methods here and what they what each one entails. But I think using all is the most effective way to do this. That way we can get all the data at once and then have it in our database. Now, after we run this uh, Bloodhound Python and it runs all the queries, we get our JSON files. We actually don't have to make any more queries to the domain controllers after that, since we're going to import this data into our database. So it's really nice that you just get all that out of the way at the beginning. But if you are on a big domain, like an enterprise domain, this is going to be a lot of queries and will probably raise some alerts for the blue team. So keep that in mind. This is not a very stealthy tool and it can easily get caught uh, because you're going to be running a lot of queries in the domain. All right, so let's go ahead and hit enter and we'll get this running. Now we can see it found our AD domain, conda.local. It found some other stuff. Let me actually full screen this so we can see it all. And look, it's already done. So... Um, the only thing I did off camera is I changed our domain controller name to DC1, so that's a little different. But we can see now if we do an LS, we have four different JSON files for the computers, domains, groups, and users. So I'm going to go open up Bloodhound here, and you can see we're basically greeted with just a blank interface. Now, it's easy enough to import data. Let's just open up that Bloodhound directory. 
and we'll highlight all these files and we can just simply drag and drop them right over. Now, once we do that, you can see it's gonna say it finished processing all the files. So now we have all of the active directory data for the conda.local domain in our Bloodhound instance. So again, as many queries as we wanna run in Bloodhound, it's not going to uh, initiate new queries in the AD domain. They're all, it's all based off of the data that's locally stored. So if there are changes that are made to the domain after we gather our data, of course, those changes will not be reflected in our Bloodhound data. So keep that in mind, it could be a little bit out of date and you might need to rerun the queries again. Now, if you open up this little drop down menu here and let's go over to queries, there are a bunch of built in queries already into Bloodhound and you can write some custom queries and things like that. But honestly, these these pre built queries are amazing. You can find so much useful information from these. Uh, so, for example, let's look for uh, all users that are as rep roastable. And we know that, of course, the J Smith user is going to pop up. Now, what we can also search for nodes right up here. Um, for example, if we want to find J Smith and, you know, find that specifically, we can just search for J Smith. And of course, we'll get the same result. Now we can click on this little node here and we'll get all sorts of information about it. Now nodes could be users, groups, machines, things like that. Um, so we can see some awesome information here, like any sessions that were open. So if J Smith was RDP'd into a machine, we could see that session there. And that can be useful for trying to harvest some domain cache credentials that may be on the machine. We can see uh, reachable high value targets. So this would be groups or um, things like that that are sensitive in the domain that this user can access. And all sorts of other things like another useful thing in here is uh, first degree local admin. So this will list all machines in which this user is a local administrator on, which of course can be super useful. Uh, some more things down here, like you know RDP privileges, where this where this user can RDP into. So if we click on this, we can see uh, J Smith at conda.local can RDP into our domain controller here. So the next thing we can do is since we've actually compromised this user, we can right click on it and hit mark user as owned. So now we can start to track things that we've already compromised in Bloodhound. And if we go back to queries, for example, what we can do is click on something like uh, find shortest path to domain admins. Now it'll ask us what domain admin group we wanna uh, try to have as our final target because you could have multiple domains in here. But for us, we just have domain admins.conda.local. Now this is gonna use some path finding algorithms to try to find us a way from any users to domain administrator. So for example, we have our J Smith user that is owned and it will find a way for us to go from J Smith to domain administrators if it exists, and also some paths from other uh, different accounts and groups that exist. Now, I think this is one of the places where people tend to get confused because these graphs can get very big and they can be very hard to work with. But a nice little tip of marking the users as owned and working off of the users that you already know you have compromised will help you a lot. So, you know, this graph is very useful and you can trace it of how to get from one user to domain administrators. Uh, multiple different ways, right? So from Jay Smith, we know that Jay Smith is a member of this account managers group. And we can see that this account managers group has a generic all permission over the domain administrators. Now, if you're new to this, you might be thinking, well, what is generic all permission? I don't even know what that means. Well, that's okay. So what we can do is if we right click on this permission here and click on help, it'll give us a nice little summary of what this means. So it says the members of the group account managers at conda.local have generic all privileges to the domain admins at conda.local. This is also known as full control. This privilege allows the trustee to manipulate the target object however they wish. So anyone who is a member of the account managers at conda.local can manipulate the target object as in the domain administrators group however they wish. That sounds a little dangerous, right? So if we go over to the abuse info, we can see that full control of a group allows you to directly modify group membership of the group. So essentially this means that since we are part of this account managers group, we, ha we can add users to this domain administrators group. So we can add new domain administrators and Bloodhound seeing this graph visually and all that, it really makes it easy to pick that out. So another thing that we can do if we want a smaller and more direct query of how do we can go from J Smith to domain admins, Again, since we marked J Smith as owned, we can click on this here where it says shortest path to domain admins from owned principles. And again, we'll click on domain admins at conda.local and we get this nice little graph here. So we can see that it's a very direct route and we can see that we go from J Smith, who is a member of this account managers group. And again, the account managers group has generic all over the domain administrators group. So this is a really simple way for us to enumerate a path to go from a standard domain user who is a member of a certain group 
And this group, again, has permission over the domain administrators. So let's go ahead and now try to exploit this path that uh, Bloodhound has found for us. So again, I'm just going to right click on this generic all and click on help. If we go to the abuse info again, you can see it says the exact command we need to run. We'll do net group domain admins. Uh, instead of harm joy, we'll do J Smith and then slash add slash domain. So that should allow us to add the J Smith user to the domain admins group. So let's go back to our terminal here. And I'm just going to uh, start a WinRM session using evil WinRM. And we'll, let's remote into that machine so we can run the commands. So let's do uh, evil WinRM dash I and then 192.168.1.179. Oh, 79, perfect. Dash U is J Smith. And the password is password123. Awesome. So now we should get a uh, WinRM session in there. Perfect. All right, so now we have a remote session as the J Smith user. And so what we should do is let's do a, uh, let's see, we'll do who am I slash groups. And just to verify the groups that we're in, which of course we already know that we are in uh, this account managers group, uh, part of the Conda domain. So we should be able to add ourselves to the domain admins group now, knowing what we do from our Bloodhound graph. So let's do net group domain admins. And then uh, J Smith slash add slash domain. So this should add J Smith to the domain administrators group. Oh, let's make sure that I spell admins, right? Awesome. So the command completed successfully. So now if we do a who am I slash groups, you'll notice it doesn't show that we're actually in the um, domain admins group. That's because whenever you change a group setting for a user, you have to end your logged on session and start a new one. So let's just type in exit and let's win RM back in. Now, if we do our who am I slash groups, we should see that we are part of the domain administrator group. So that's a really easy way that we can use Bloodhound to enumerate some different objects in Active Directory, like users and groups, how they relate to each other, then run queries based on those objects and find paths to get to higher privilege groups or move laterally throughout the network. This tool can be a ton of fun to run in some big Active Directory environments. And I would encourage you to try to replicate this setup on your domain. So if you've been following along and you set up your Active Directory domain, try to add some groups like this account managers group, try to add this and replicate this setup exactly. So add your account managers group, add a J Smith user or whatever you want to call it to that group and try to give that group generic all privilege over domain admins. Once you do that, run Bloodhound and see if you can replicate this attack method. It's something that can be Fairly simple to do, but you'll learn a lot in the process. I know I actually had a bit of a hard time setting this up initially because I wasn't too familiar with Active Directory on the uh, setting up side and the configuration side. So learning both sides of things can really help when you want to attack it. Knowing how to set up groups and how they're actually configured will help you understand the misconfigurations a lot more. I hope this video was useful in helping you understand how Bloodhound works and how you can get started using it. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to like and subscribe down below. I'll see you next time. Thank you.